Looking back and visualizing the whole slow accumulation of inventions that have made us human beings and finally civilized human beings, we find salient among them man's developing ability to include in the conception of his own group ever more people living at a greater distance his clan, his tribe, his nation, his religion, his part of the world. Each step has meant greater potentialities and greater danger. Each time we have increased the number of those whom we would protect, whose death at our own hands we would call murder, we have increased the number of those who could become, in a body and overnight, without further identification, our mortal enemies whom it would be virtue to destroy. Finally, with the invention of modern weapons, we have reached the end of the road that can be traversed in the simple dichotomy of ours, whom we protect, and they, the enemy, against whom we protect our own. Abruptly, we are brought face to face with the stark reality that we cannot protect our own children unless we protect their children also. Not before a declaration of war or after a peace treaty as in the past, but while the enmity exists, so that the war will never be declared. So, the individual member of each nation, each group of nations pledged to some position in the world which is denied or threatened by some other nation or group of nations, becomes his enemy's keeper, as well as his brothers, his neighbors, his fellow nationals and his fellow believers, with whom he shares a common ideology. This is something no man on earth have as yet learned how to be. In the past, men gathered together out of choice to meet the challenge of danger that came from other men. Now, for the first time, each side is equally dangerous to all. Each nation with the power to precipitate total war must become, of necessity, as it seeks to protect its own, the protectors of those against whom its fatal armaments are arrayed. We have come full circle. Our human situation no longer permits us to make armed dichotomies between those who are good and those who are evil, those who are right and those who are wrong. The first blow dealt to the enemy's children will sign the death warrant of our own. The processes of evolution have kept us one species, and now the technical advances of cultural evolution have empowered to destroy us, have made it necessary for us, at last, to make the invention that will protect every member of the human species, with the sanctions that once stretched no farther than a stone could be thrown.